Are we ready for excitement? Is that extreme or what? That's better. Oh, that is beautiful. nice. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Never could have sanded yeah. this. Yeah, as smooth, yeah. smooth as a baby's bottom. I'm Simon Cooper from the Cooper Strip Club. And I'm Dory Cooper. And, and that's um, Dory behind the camera. <laughs> <laughs> if it gets me. <laughs> anyway, we're here to um, strip this oak cabinet, take this chocolate varnish off it. Red one is our stripper. We've got crickets absorbing into that. So why do you like it thin? Just absorbs better. I find the thick gels tend to sit more on top, where the thin stripper that we make it just absorbs in better, as you can see. This is a interesting finish too. It's not just the original finish. It's had a tinted sort of chocolatey stuff stuck over top at some point when they did a, a bit of a renovation to it. It's a bit like cellophane, you lose more and more grain. When I did this other uh, drawer front at the show we were at, the owner was most impressed with just how fast it was. And you're just keeping the surface wet with the stripper as it needs it. We'll give it a somewhere between two and five minutes to absorb down into the finish. I use the word varnish because basically that's code for clear finish. So it could be a lacquer or a polyurethane or whatever it is. It will, um, there is nothing it won't strip. Our whole system is about no sanding and the logic behind that or our, our reasoning for it is that the person who made this cabinet sanded it and that sanding is still there underneath all this old varnish so if we can remove it without damaging the wood we don't actually have to sand it again which is pretty cool can you leave it on too long no i mean it will dry eventually the solvents will evaporate um, but it's not going to hurt it. We often when people use a gel stripper, if it goes dry, then it's like concrete. This doesn't have that problem. The original colour is going to be so much nicer. So as I was saying before, is the, this would have been originally finished in a light golden colour, which is perfect for the oak. And then some time later, it probably had some marks and things, and so the whole piece was recoated over top of the um, original finish with some tinted varnish and that would have turned it to this whole mud look. Just little tests, little tests. Okay, are we ready for excitement? Are all the cameras working? You don't get a second chance with this team. Go. Light dragging. Imagine sanding that off. So I'm just using the, the steel wool. This is a European wool. It's a very sharp wool. And it's just a bit of a sacrifice. It's just going to clog up with that goo. But at this point, that's all right. It's exciting seeing the colour. Okay, now. Is that extreme or what? The brush that you're using is a soft. Yeah, this is a, what we call a copper bristled detail brush. It's a very, very soft bristle. It's perfect for cleaning my hat. And very good for carvings. So whether it's a bent wood chair or a carving like this, it doesn't do any damage. So we're just wiping off a bit of that goo. So we've now stripped what's on the surface, so we can now reapply some more stripper. 
and this is to go into the grain itself. So that was a pretty easy round one. Normally on a draw front, we would take the drawers out and do them, but I wanted to leave them all in today to just so you can sort of see it all, all together. I'll do little touch-ups later. So this application of stripper is to get into the grain itself. And normally with um, paint strippers, if you're getting the into the grain, the ammonias and things will damage the timber, but this is virtually pH neutral and you're not going to get any of that damage happening to the timber at all. No, no water on Coopers either. No, un unfortunately. <laughs> There's good margin in water. I see the stripper disappearing into the grain and so I'm just keeping it damp. I want it to go into the, into the timber and dissolve the varnishes and things that are in the grain. So this step, as I've said, is, is stripping what's in the surface, the, the first coat that soaked in. So we put the stripper on, we let it absorb in for a couple of minutes, and then we give it a scrub with, um, in this case, the, um, the steel wool. Scrub in the direction of the grain, you don't go around in circles. That's looking really good. So it's a wet scrub. And you can actually feel the wool just connecting with the wood. You can squeegee it off, sort of, with the trowel. We prefer dragging to pushing. So again, we're using the detail brush. So this has just brought all that varnish out of the grain. Now we rinse it clean. So this is our flusher and this is what we call a grit embedded pad. It's a, like a nylon-y weave with a actually very very fine grit in it and this is not a neutralizer. People often think this is a neutralizer but it's a, it's a rinse. It's a slow drying solvent to get the residues of varnish and things that are on there still and left over stripper that might be there and allow us to get it off. So we, we spray it on wet for a start and then we scrub it again in the direction of the grain. Now the colour it is at the moment when it's wet, this colouring in here, that's going to be the colour it would be with a new clear finish on it, not a nuclear finish, a new clear finish. So you're not talking about the shine, you're no. talking about the colour. So during this process here we're not removing any of the dings and dongs in the timber itself, so if it's um, an antique that you're working on and you um, the finish has to come off because it's totally stuffed then it comes off but it's not damaging the timber itself and that's really important you want all that character remaining. When you wipe things off try and roll the rag up a little bit try and pull the old finish all the residues off if you sort of scrub, you sim you're often scrubbing back into the timber residues. Doing the draw front, okay, spray, scrub. Spray, wipe. 
So this other drawer, that side, would have been this colour when I did it for the owner the other day. It would have been exactly this colour here, but then when it dries over the next hour or three or whatever, overnight, it's going to, as all the solvents evaporate right out, it'll come to this power colour. So we say to people, don't make finishing decisions based on the dry colour. Look at it when it's wet, and this is what you uh, decide on. So that's got that real classic oak colour that you see so often. So that is done, ready for a new finish. So we're going to carry on now and get the rest of it done, get this hardware off. So it won't run everywhere if you move your hand as you spray. That's better. Okay, so we've done all the stripping now. This is ready for anyone's finish. So we will see you tomorrow in a moment. So see you in a sec. See you in a moment. It's tomorrow. It only took a moment, didn't it? And what we've got here is a clean, dry, absorbent surface. It's all stripped nice and clean, and there's um, no varnish left on it, which is good. And you get to see things that you may decide you want to do sanding on, but don't. If it looked good when it was wet, it'll look good again when it's got a finish on. A lot of times we get asked, well, how much did you use? So I'm spraying lots and lots of stuff on, so I must have used gallons of it. But no, we didn't. So I was working with two bottles yesterday, and so I put what was left back into the other one, and I've used one half a litre bottle. That's half a litre, so not one litre, half a litre. Half a litre, 500 yes. mils. Yep. And so that's uh, not much product at all to do a whole cabinet. So Cooper's goes a long, long way. And that's why you save money, which is good. And the flusher, that's the only bottle I was working with. And it's got 400, so I only just used just a tad over uh, 100 mils. So that's... Again, stuff all, that's great. <laughs> um, so that's that. So the, you can do a lot of stripping with a little bit of product with Coopers. The burning question and probably many minds is health and safety. All that health and safety question I get asked often. Okay. When I spray stripper out of here, it comes out as a droplet. It's not coming out as an aerosol spray can which floats around like fly spray. It comes out as a solid droplet and so that's a good thing too for a start. Secondly, 
is the vapor that it has is heavier than air, which means it goes out and it just goes zoom, straight down to the ground. And then it you just is easily moved away with um, our extractor fan. And this room we're in here is very, very big. So it's, um, it's a no drama here again. Um, so we're not saying it's orange juice and that sort of thing. So you take logical precautions. But we've got a whole section on health and safety on our website. So check that out at cooperstripclub.com. Okay, so that's that. Finishing. This can now be finished with any product you want. Um, don't paint it, please. Um, but if you do want to, you can. Um, it can be varnished, polyurethane, or lacquer, or any of that sort of thing. I think all that sort of thing just entombs the, the, the grain. Uh, we've got something we think is way, way better, and that's our moisturizer. So this is a, a brew of ours we've had for a long, long time now. It's a blend of lots of different gums, oils, waxes, and it's, it's a, we call it a living finish. And so I'm going to put this on, and we're going to leave it for a couple of days to, to have a drink and absorb and keep it fed, um, and you'll see this come alive. And you're going to see the original colors coming back out. So let's let's do it. I'll just container, shake, shake, shake. It's a bit cold today, so I warmed it up a little bit with some warm water before. And this will hopefully... And then a clean paintbrush. Looking at this top is interesting. So many people, they'll look at a top when it's all dry after it's been stripped, and they will look at some of this patchiness, and they will think, oh, I better give that a sand, give that a light sand. It's a real major mistake. You're taking off patina, you're taking off some of that character, and then suddenly becomes uneven with the rest of it, and you've got to get, suddenly you're sanding the whole thing. So trust in the wet colour. So the wet colour, the flusher. The wet made. flush colour. What I love about this product, you can be useless with your brushwork. It could be cold, it could be hot, it could be dusty, it could be humid. You just slap it on like honey on toast. As Dory said, you don't have to be good with a brush, you just slap it on. But look at that colour difference, it's just amazing. And the colours just evolve over the next couple of days. We call it a, a living finish, like skin care for wood. Now we're in a very, very dusty building. The floor is limestone and it's a windy day today. And so there'll be a bit of microscopic dust will float around a little bit. But it doesn't matter. You definitely wouldn't want to put polyurethane on this surface with a brush and wait for it to dry. Now these um, drawer fronts will be neat. This product's also food safe. It can go on a child's toy, bedroom furniture cots. Food I, bowls. Yeah, I love it because when you're applying it, there's no smell. It's like the varnishes just stink. Lots of finishes fail because you put them on in weather that's not ideal. It might be too hot or too cold or humid or any of these sort of things and with, with moisturizer it just doesn't matter. And the reason is it actually isn't going to dry. We're not waiting for this to dry over a couple of days, we're just waiting for this to absorb in. got these stripes coming down and that's they're actually separate little pieces of veneer that have all been done to highlight all this medullary ray. It's quite unique to oak, it's quite prominent 
Um, and when they cut it, they cut it specifically so this medullary ray would show out. that is the moisturizer on and we leave this on for two days as a just a number I plucked out of the sky one day um, it gives it enough time to drink absorb what it wants um, we come back tomorrow and have a look at it and we stick our head down in the light and we look for any parts that might have fully absorbed and look almost dry look like look, almost look like you've missed a bit and if we have got a bit like that we just literally just put a bit more on that part um, you don't have to do the whole piece if it looks greasy and wet then just leave it alone I see a little bit down the end here just. especially pieces that have been in the sun yeah so just give it what it wants it will absorb what it can take I mean if you can't get back to it for a week that's fine just can't, just do this next step um, in a week's time it doesn't matter this is not going to dry. It's, it's a different logic to finishing. People are so used to things that dry. Uh, this is not supposed to ever dry. And so we, we leave it. When we're happy that it's not absorbing anymore, we're gonna buff off the surplus. And, and it won't matter if there's any dust that's got onto it. It's not gonna upset the finish at all. It's been three days and everything's been absorbing away quite happily. The moisturizer has been disappearing and putting more on there. The top particularly is had lots of absorption, but it seems to have had all it can take net for now. So we get ourselves one of the dry cloths I was using before with the stripping, but a nice big clean one. And we literally just start buffing the surplus off. So the friction of the rag warms it all up a little bit. That top looks absolutely gorgeous. Can you just imagine how long it would have taken with the sander? Well, it's all buffed and it's looking gorgeous. But I just want to quickly talk about maintenance. Generally speaking, all this is ever going to need is just a, a bit more moisturizer from time to time and leave it overnight and buff it up. And often people say, well, how often do I got to do that? Well, it just depends on where it's in the house. If it's in the direct sun, it's going to need it more than if it's sitting in a shaded area. So this has been fun. This has been really good to take something that was chocolate varnish and make it back to its new without having to get a sander out. It's now ready to be delivered. Put a bit of bling on the front. We are gobsmacked when we saw this little drawer <laughs> done oh, yes. yeah. on the show. Yeah. And yeah. it was like that. Here we go. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, that is beautiful. Nice. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Yes. Have a oh. Touch. oh. Oh, have a touch Don't of it, it's like soap. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness me. And the thing is, I never could have sanded these things. Look at it. Never could have sanded yeah. this. Yes. And smooth, yeah. smooth as a baby's bottom. Ah. Yes. I haven't shown oh. anyone this yet. This is the one here. So oh, what's, yes. what's this all about? Your little, yeah, little yeah. story. Yeah, my brother, Eric. Yes. He um, he put, well, he wrote that in when he was little. To give it a bit more oomph. Mm. Like that, and that, looks, that looks beautiful, yes. Yeah, yeah. Looks nice. nice. The green and this color goes really well. Yeah. Yeah. It just does that mellow glow, it yeah. does. Yes, is, yeah. Um, now I'm really right. pleased with it. And now, when you're touching it, you are touching wood, there's yeah. no plastic coating, yeah. there's yeah. the moisturizer, um, so you're actually touching real wood. So, mm. it's not like a polyurethane, no, not at all. This no. is a living finish. We've had it here for 10 years now, eh, after my mum died. Mm. And I always thought oh, I'd really like to have it more a more natural color. 
Are you looking for a stripper? A stripper that really gets it off? Cooper's the stripper that gets it off every time.